Okay, so just a quick update on the uh, electric motorbike project for those uh, friends and work colleagues and things uh, playing along at home. So I have, in the meantime, since the last time you saw this, I have pulled out the old motor and motor controller, which you can see there, ready to sell. And I have fitted the new motor. And if you look at the difference there between that one and that one, you'll notice that this is about twice the size of that. So hopefully that's going to do the business. This motor here is the uh, ME1003. So I think that's about 12 kilowatts continuous or so at 72 volts. And conveniently, the face of that motor and the face of this motor were similar enough that I was able to just um, enlarge the mounting holes a little bit. And that motor fitted straight onto the mounting plate I already had. And stroke of luck, the shaft size was also the same. So I was able to reuse the same uh, front sprocket. And actually, um, with the with the uh, loaded output of that motor, it actually works out that the um, the big rear sprocket that I made is going to be unnecessary. The, the actual bike's uh, standard sprocket ratio is almost perfect for a... Uh, a bike that will do a comfortable 100 kilometers per hour or so and then you will notice the uh, the other magic is I've got the um, I've started assembling the battery compartment here so this is just some two millimeter aluminium that I folded I'll, I'll put a little bit on the end of this video about how I folded that and then I've just um, cut and TIG welded uh, the uh, kind of the side on here you'll see on the other side it's open I'll show you the battery in a moment um, TIG welding aluminium actually quite a uh, quite a fun part of the project is the the TIG welding of aluminium it's a lot of people consider it to be a a hard thing to do I would say it's substantially easier than something like arc welding for example if you've done a bit of soldering TIG welding is a very natural thing to do so I'll just quickly grab a battery and we'll jump over on the other side okay jumping over on this side um, so what I'm actually currently busy with, we'll get to the batteries in a sec, but I'm just, um, I fabricated up the box on the weekend, but it's actually still loose in the frame. So I've just roughly positioned it where I'm going to have it. And then I've started mounting these little plates and just marking um, where they are going to have to be welded to this box to use the existing mounting, like there's a little bolt in there, the existing mounting points for the frame. So there's some mounting points there, obviously on the other side in the same place, and then down underneath there is um, there's this uh, rod that used to hold the engine on so there's some very sturdy frame mounting points there as well it's gonna have to go onto this box um, yeah so talking about batteries um, I finally sorted out the the battery problem I think I mentioned last time that batteries was the the biggest problem when it came to building electric motorbikes and as, I've, as luck would have it one of my old um, contacts that I used to buy e-waste of um, I contacted and contacted contacted him and said hey uh, what can I do about getting hold of some uh, you know old lithium batteries and as luck would have it he had been scrapping a whole bunch of um, those ele electric scooters that have found their way into the cities and uh, what happens is when the, the councils around the place decide that a particular brand or make of scooter is uh, unsafe for some reason they end up just scrapping literally hundreds of them and um, this friend of mine happened to be in charge of the scrapping and decided to hang on to the batteries so i managed to get um, 30 of these uh, tubes so these tubes contain 20 18650 lithium ion uh, cells each a very good uh, quality 10 amp samsung cells so this tube at 37 volts uh, will quite happily deliver 10 amps, no problem. And the the capacities that you see I've got on there, like 4791, that means that at a 5 amp discharge, which is where I'm testing it, these tubes are, are um, getting a capacity of almost 5 amp hours. So that's pretty spectacular. Um, yeah, very good price as well. So that's going to make life very easy. I'm just going to series up two tubes to give me 84 volts and then parallel up 15 of those con combinations. So in theory, I should have uh, 84 volts at 150 amps continuous out of this. So that's a very, very good and um, 5 amp hour multiplied by 15. So I think that's 75 amp hour total as well. So that's going to be quite a lot. I'm hoping to be able to fit them all in here. I did some uh, 
some <laughs> I, I did a CAD model of this and a CAD model of that um, assuming that this thing was completely round which is not and um, I think I was able to fit 26 of them so I'm hoping with the flat spot and a bit of uh, persuasion I can actually fit all 30 in, in here but um, yeah we'll have to see so that's it for me tonight the only other thing I've done is I, I pulled the forks off a couple of weekends ago and just changed the fork seals they were both like one fork was completely empty and the other one was leaking so just you know had never been looked after so yeah that's uh, where the project is at right now um, I'll be back in a in a little bit when um, I've done the when I've you know got the motor controller and that kind of stuff going again uh, in the meantime I'll quickly show you the the batteries um, that I've got on the shelf and I will put up a little bit at the end for those interested in how I folded up this um, this box just with the stuff I had at home so it's a bit of a pain it'd be nice to have a aluminium folder anyway that's the uh, that's the current progress I think it's gonna look quite good if I can get a view from down here I might uh, might do some art or something on the uh, on the aluminium box definitely something on the sides these are the batteries I mentioned before for the electric bike so I think I've currently got 32 in total of these tubes and you can see the numbers on them where I've basically capacity tested them I'll show you that in a second safely stored next to some chemicals as you can see um, the, yeah pretty awesome so these ones here if the numbers have already been tested over on this side are some that still needs uh, needs testing but they're charged and ready to go and then over on this side I've got um, these are the capacity testers that I, that I designed and built myself so you can see that tube there is currently being tested with this capacity tester um, output on the screen over there is kind of telling me what's going on and I'm also using this uh, dump resistor in those in the current path uh, so that the active device on this discharge tester doesn't have to do all the hard work. So yeah, pretty uh, fantastic, those tubes. Just a quick break here to show how I am going about folding the battery box for the electric motorbike. So unfortunately I don't have a very good bending system, uh, or folding system, but have a table, have some clamps, and what I tend to do is just um, figure, out, figure out where you want your, your bend to be. Bring it out a couple of millimeters. Um, I've got some nice chunky aluminium plate here which uh, holds it down to a straight edge of the plywood that's underneath there. Use a tungsten scribe and give it a bunch of scribes uh, in there just to um, kind of out a few a millimeter or so from the edge. Just to give it a place where it actually wants to bend. And then what I found best is get a piece of wood or plastic or something like that and um, clamp it as best you can to your, uh, to your aluminium and I mean best case scenarios you could drill some holes and just attach it and then use that as a lever and you'll see the the whole thing actually bends fairly nice if you uh, if you give it a good scrape um, it ends up coming out quite nice so as you can see the battery box is currently about that far um, I'll show you once we have it all ready to go and in the bike next cool